Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.2. In this episode I hope to land a Kerbal on the moon and return that Kerbal safely to Kerbin. But first I think I'm going to upgrade the launch pad because otherwise our max vessel mass is 18 tons. We could send the mission in multiple pieces but we can't dock things together right now. And uh, if we just like send the return vehicle to the moon and have the Kerbal rendezvous with the return vehicle in orbit around the moon that's not really helpful, that saves about 200 meters per second of delta V, so that's not really worth it. So I'm going to upgrade here, and I think I'll upgrade the vehicle assembly building as well because 30 parts is rather restrictive. Now there is one thing that I really wanted in order to build my rocket, and that is fuel lines. So uh, are they here? Yeah, they're here. Okay, so I need fuel lines, and that means I need science, which means I'm going to go back to the Minmus probe and try to hop around and do some science. Uh, but first, let's check out our contracts. Taking a look at, um, we still need to do material studies around Minmus, and we need to do science around the moon, and that'll be done with our Kerbal. And actually, the Kerbal can handle this transmitter, recover scientific data from space around Kerbin as well. Uh, Taking a look at new contracts though, there's a certain lack of anything to do with landing a Kerbal on the moon, which is not really helpful. Uh, we've got a lot of tourist contracts even though, you know, we haven't landed on the moon. I don't remember space tourism being a thing before uh, moon landing, but you know, that's just, that's just our timeline. But uh, position satellites, these seem pretty lucrative considering our current budget is 309,000 and that's 100,000 right there. And this one, that's 170,000. So yeah, this one is actually practically in a lunar orbit. All right, we'll pick them up. All right, so I'm gonna go to VAB and see what I can build. Actually, before that, we will handle this probe and try to get it to uh, another couple of biomes. It is over the Midlands. It dealt with these flats. I think, well, I think we'll head for this flat over here, and then uh, that flat over there. There's probably something along the way. I hope this slopes over here. We'll see. Um, as soon as we hit another biome, we'll slow down. Let's not go too fast initially, but we'll be heading a little bit northeast, mostly east. All right, here we go. I'll retract the magnetometer. just so that uh, it doesn't look cumbersome, even though it's not actually unbalancing us in any way. Let me not go too far. I'll extend out to about halfway around here. Otherwise, if I extend all the way to that flat, then if I find a biome along the way, I'd have to cut all of that velocity out. Of course, if uh, there are slopes here, then even that would be too far. No? Okay. Maybe something else. Oh, wait, there's slopes. So I'm just gonna kill my horizontal velocity and come straight down so I'm assured of hitting that biome. Oh, wait, it's Midlands again. Uh, hmm. I don't know, th those are pretty sharp slopes. I don't know if this probe would survive a landing there anyway. Uh, I guess I'll let it move on. It seems a little bit dangerous to land there. Oh wait, lowlands. Okay, uh... Lowlands are good. Maybe they're not so slopey. Okay, coming straight down as planned. All right, there we go. We are on the ground. Let us log the magnetometer data. Transmit that. That's 25 science. We need 90 science. And we can transmit uh, 20 from here. So the magnetometer plus the thermometer, we only need two biomes to get 90. So we'll do this one and then another one and then we'll be done. We can get the fuel lines. Okay, so let's just head for the flats. 
fairly easy to land there. Now one thing that I'm sort of missing is the ability to make conic or or smooth cone procedural parts tanks. So far the only fuel tanks I've been able to make with procedural parts are cylindrical tanks. I don't know when I'm able to unlock the other shapes and that's gonna hamper the design a bit. Okay, let's cut it here. Okay, we are back on the ground again. Let us log the magnetometer data. Transmit. Log temperature data. This is just Minmus's flats. So these are the general flats. There's also greater, lesser, and probably a few things in between. But anyway, here we go. Transmit that. And now we have 90 signs. Okay. So, the probe has done its job again. Still has 1,376 meters per second left, which is plenty. And we can go back to the Space Center. Okay, with that, fuel systems with the fuel lines will be unlocked. Maybe I'll get the other tank shapes. Probably not. I don't see conic tanks in here, so anyway. Alright, to the VAB. Okay, I've been working merrily here, building my little capsule. Uh, it's actually going to have lander legs as a lander portion. But I noticed that we have some detecting abilities unlocked already. Uh, for instance, we have the carbonite detection array here. And so we can actually drill for carbonite. We've got this portable carbonite sample kit. We've got the radial carbonite drill here. This ventral drill assembly. So yeah, we can uh, search for and drill for carbonite already. I think uh, our colonization efforts are closer than I initially thought. So yeah, we can look forward to that. We've even got the altimetry sensor. We can start doing proper mapping. I think uh, the construction of a base will quickly follow what we plan to do with this mission landing a Kerbal on the moon. So look forward to that. But first, let me finish building this rocket and we'll see how this goes. All right, everyone, I am proud to present the Athens-1 launch vehicle. I think I'm going to use Cities of Greece as my uh, naming convention to start off with. I don't think that's been done. Uh, so yeah, I think they'll come, they'll be so, sort of good names. Sparta, Corinth, class, uh, rockets, you know, that sort of thing. Should be pretty good. Anyway, but uh, what we have here is an interesting rocket. It has the little capsule up here. We've got the supplies placed here. And if we take a look at the supply dialog, we see that's two days worth of supplies and it has seven days worth of battery. It also has uh, solar panels. Those do not retract. And uh, we can see four batteries down there. Um, two days worth of supplies. That would be good enough for a really quick mission to the moon, but we're hoping that the Kerbal can access the supplies on the surface. Uh, in any case, as I understand it, it's not going to be too bad if the Kerbal is without supplies for a couple of hours kind of thing. So that will be fine. And uh, I put the extra heat shield as I tend to. Uh, so I've reduced the ablator on the capsule and then there... Can I pick that up please? 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 Okay, there we go. And I put this heat shield. It doesn't add too much more mass and it just makes me feel better if the if the heat is being distributed to a different part other than the capsule, that's all. So, yeah, so that's the lander, has 2,012 meters per second. This is the transfer stage, and the stage that completes orbit around Kerbin and also gets us into orbit around the moon, and it's an LV-909. Very simple, simple tanks. Uh, here things get interesting. You can see parachutes here, which means that I'm trying to recover this. I'll try and do it manually instead of relying on stage recovery. Stage recovery thinks that this stage, if we highlight just this stage here, is uh, good to go. It's uh, going to have 3.7 meter per second touchdown velocity. But stage recovery, I don't know how it's working with the heat issues and all. So I think we'll try and follow this down manually to see how that works. We've got drogue shoots and main shoots, and that seems to be enough for it. 
Uh, we've actually got the probe core down here protected by a heat shield and that's because if I put it high up I was worried about wobblies. We're, we're probably gonna get some wobblies here um, and the reason is we well we don't have any struts we do have Kerbal Joint Reinforcements, so maybe that would help, but I'm not sure. Anyway, and then other than that, it's uh, six LV T45s in sort of a Proton style thing. I often go with the Proton style thing, especially when I'm trying to land it again, because that gives a wide base for us to land on. I have tweak scaled up the micro landing struts. I don't know if this is legal or not, but desperate times call for desperate measures. Uh, it might cause glitches, it might be alright, we will find out. This is a good way to try that out. Well, not the best way since we've got a Kerbal on there, but in any case, this is how I'm going to try and send a Kerbal to the moon. And our crew will be... well, uh, Jebediah seems to have an extra point over Valentina, so I'm going to send Valentina this time. Okay, on that note, I will take it out to the launch pad and we'll see how it goes. Alright, here we are. There are cloudy skies. We've got um, 100 blader up there and then 200 on the one that is below the rocket. We've got supplies. Those are already starting to run out. Darn it, Valentina. Oh, I forgot to dump the mop propellant. We'll carry it anyway. Uh, we'll see how that goes. If it turns out that I'm like a few meters per second short of getting her back home, that's really gonna bite, but otherwise, I think it'll be all right. Uh, as far as science is concerned, I think the main science around, uh, I think we need to do science around Kerbin orbit, is that right? From space around Kerbin. It doesn't say low. I don't think we've done a, an EVA report high over Kerbin, so that'll be my plan for getting that done. Uh, we will need to return Valentina in order to get the science. There is no transmitting device on here. Uh, that's just because I expect to bring my Kerbals back. So SAS on, throttle up. Uh, remember, I can revert in this save if there are glitches. So if there is a glitch, I will be prepared to do so. The supplies are, are diminishing a little bit quicker than I would have hoped. We're, we've already lost uh, a... No, yeah, it's ticking down there. Okay, let's get going then. Lots of gimbal on this rocket, no fins though. There's an extra reaction wheel on the control unit at the bottom of the vessel. It'd probably be safer to control from there, incidentally. Let's say control from here. Less wiggle. Okay, starting to turn. We will probably land this in the water, but we could try for the eastern peninsula. I'm still not trusting Smart ASS, especially with FAR. Prograde Vector doesn't seem to be wanting to come down to 45 degrees like I would like it to. Hopefully we're out of flip range now. Ooh, different color. Oh, very red like this. Not so red like this. Interesting. Oh, heating. Uh, I better watch the heating. Try and go higher. Yeah, wow, there's actually an uh, overheating indicator there. Okay, well, our apoapsis is pretty good. Let's, let's wait a bit on using further thrust. We got 728 meters per second left here, but really the LV... 909 is supposed to finish orbit for us. We're not supposed to do it with this. So we'll get the payload to orbit and then we'll switch back to this to follow it down. That way we don't have to rely on stage recovery. I'll reserve 200 meters per second. Alright. With that separation. Oh, that was a little bit glitchy looking. And ignition. All right. Finishing orbit. 
I'm deliberately tilting that because I want to sort of finish orbit right here rather than wait till apoapsis. I guess I can wait till apoapsis. The other stage will still have plenty of time. Okay, we have a good orbit. 130 by 100, let's call it. And now back to the other stage. Switch to. Okay, here we are with this one. 277 meters per second left after we dumped the payload. Let's just have Smarty SS try and orient us retrograde using the reaction wheel. And we'll have to hope that the engines and the heat shield are enough to protect this thing. So those are the drogue chutes. Let's take a close look. Oh, those still have the drogue chute texture though. Oh, there's no sim. Oh boy. I didn't, uh. I didn't do symmetry right on those shoots. Shoot. Um. Okay. Well, that's gonna not be so useful. Let me set those aside. We'll have. Oh, okay. That's actually. Alright. Very confusing. Alright. We'll see about that. We'll just have this come down wherever it ends up. Actually, right now, Smarty SS is holding the retrograde fairly well. I think it's engine gimbling that has most of its trouble with. We gotta be catching some serious heat here. Oh, the landing struts are overheating. Well, if they go, we can still potentially land on the engine bells. We're not really slowing down just yet. Oh, something higher up is exploding. Okay, wait, what was that? Stack decoupler? Well, actually, that's fine. And then the micro landing struts. That's right at the top. So that's, that's not a problem. We still got our controller. Now a lot of things are overheating. Let me see if I can do that instead. So we've lost our landing struts. There's a little bit of land over here. I don't know if I actually wanted to touch down on land without the landing struts. It would be sort of nicer to sit down on the water. It says that the parachutes are safe. Don't trust it though. I'm going to use a little bit of thrust. Now I believe it. Now the other parachutes are uneven. One is a drogue chute, but the others aren't. Bit complicated. And the drogue chute has fully deployed already. But tweaks getting up the landing legs seems futile. It doesn't seem to help anything. We'll need we'll need landing struts with more heat protection. I'll even bring it to two meters per second. It'll help us dump. It'll help us dump some fuel anyway. Mm, there's a bit of slope. And okay, it's bouncing on the engine bells. Recover. Well, that's good, I guess. More of a slope could be a problem. But anyway, we got 67.3% of the value back, 14,000 funds. Nothing to shake a stick at, but... Yep. Alright. Alright, we are back with Valentina. It is thundering outside my window, leading to a rather ominous atmosphere. Uh... Perhaps you'll hear some of it, perhaps you won't. But, but I've already plotted our transfer to the moon there. I've tried to get it uh, within a day. It's a day and nine hours to periapsis, but that's the plot. And we will proceed. I think we should get the solar panels out. I didn't have action groups unlocked, by the way, just in case you're wondering. I have not unlocked that building yet. Okay, solar panels are out and they cannot be retracted. 
Okay, very good. Looks like we're ready to go. Interesting that the ablative shielding on the capsule itself is called ablative shielding, whereas the one on the heat shield is called ablator. I wonder if that makes any difference. May I should have added more than 100 units of ablator now that I think about it. Okay, let's get rid of this. That looks good, 40 kilometer periapsis. Now only 5 hours and 52 minutes away. How are our supplies? So it says 2 days, 1 hour and 39 minutes. Okay. Let's head out a bit, though we don't want to, well, we want to do a bit of science at high Kerbin orbit. All right, let's do that now. Let's see, oh, Alt F10, Rebuild Ocean. Okay, so now crew report. Okay, keep experiment. Valentina EVA. EV report. Keep experiment and board. Okay. That should count. On to the moon. Okay, here we go. Don't have too much time left on the suicide burn countdown. Pointing this way seems to help. About there. Okay, I'm running out of fuel here. I wanted to reserve a thousand. Okay, there we go. Okay, this is of an awkward camera angle. Whoop. Okay, that was a little bit weird. 28 meters, not 25 meters. And SAS off, so we can sell the pod. Oh, wait, whoa, whoa, hmm. The pod does not seem to be very settled. That's awkward. I'm a little bit worried about what's going to happen when I take Valentina out of it. Now, we don't have any... Well, we don't have any other SAS unit. We also don't have a ladder. And we have the solar panels right here. So this could be a little bit difficult to keep those solar panels safe. Anyway, uh, Valentina EVA? Whoa! No, 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 no. Uh, okay. Uh, well, uh, okay. EVA report. Keep experiment. Take data. Can we do a crew report right now? No. Okay. Board. Uh... Uh, hmm. Okay. Great. Crew report. Keep data. So, do I have her plant a flag? Or, I mean, if she tries to use her EVA pack to get up here, it'll probably knock over the pod the way it's going right now. I think it's probably the tweak scaled landing struts that are the problem. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna quick save. This seems prudent. EVA. Uh, oh, she broke the... Well, it's probably better off breaking it now than later. 
Okay. Well, now we've got some debris on the moon. Alright. EV report. Keep. Plant a flag. All right, first moon landing, and we will put the date that I plan to upload this, and I'll just say first. Very traditional comment. Okay. Well, now, can she get back into the pod without knocking it over? That's a good question. Crap. Board. Whew. Okay, well that's done. SAS back on. Alright, alright. Yeah, we managed it. Let's go back home. Oh, just in case uh, I didn't mention it before, this is the rear guard liquid fuel engine. I think it comes with stock extensions. Okay. Pretty legit looking little vehicle. I like putting the little supply tanks on the bottom there and the batteries too. That was a good idea. There we go. Alright, now, Valentina wants to pop out and see if you can get another EV report here. Midlands, I think we already have, right? Uh, maybe not? Okay. I always think I already have the Midlands, I mean, it's so common. Can't really see any biomes on this side. We'll try and hit that crater. I don't think we actually did in space above that crater, so. Far side crater, keep experiment. Forward. EV report, keep and forward. Oh, we've done that one. Okay. Okay, now let's go home. Ignition. Trans Kerbal injection. Kerbin injection. Or, yeah, trans Kerbin injection, right. Okay, Valentina's on her way back home. Carbon periapsis about 27 kilometers. Uh, we have one day worth of supplies left in the pod, and one day, two hours and 53 minutes left to get there, so she'll be without supplies for about three hours. So as far as the life support situation and using the supplies from that probe, uh, we'll need another part. It was clearly not showing up here, by the way. Okay, here once again we have to worry about exactly where... Oh, it's a, it shouldn't be too far away from home, hopefully. And it looks like it'll be definitely over water. So that's nice. Okay, well we're already in the atmosphere and we haven't dumped the service module. So, first of all... Uh, retrograde please. Oh, shoot! <gasps> no! Already? Uh, wow, I didn't realize it would go all pear-shaped, like, we, we were only 66 kilometers, and it was already going pear-shaped? Yeah, EVA. It says the command pod burned up from overheating. It has this weird other timestamp, too. Mm, I don't believe this. Well, that, that was definitely my fault. I should have been more careful. But under the circumstances, I think... I think I want to redo on that. Okay, so... 
not normally what I would uh, go about doing, but I'm not gonna have Valentina die on, in something like that. I thought I just thought that the thin part of the atmosphere would be okay still, but apparently not. Uh, it seems like a sort of brick wall atmosphere coming back from. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's daily reentry or far or something. I don't know. Okay, I'm I'm gonna load the last quick save. Okay, 158 kilometers, and descending quickly. Let's take the opportunity to slow down with the remaining fuel before we dump that module. Uh, though we don't need to be exactly retrograde, we would like to make sure that our periapsis doesn't go down too much. Okay, that's it. 27 kilometer periapsis. All right, set. There goes the service module. Now oh, just us and heat shield. Let's hope Smart ASS can do this job at least, but I don't know. Where are we sending down this time? Uh, in the middle of nowhere. Probably on the other side of the world from the KSC. And we'll just have to hope for no bumpy terrain, but there's 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 some of it heading up there. Okay, safe interface with the atmosphere. The blazer is really melting off though. Whoa! Okay, you don't have to shake my camera if the service module is blowing up. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. Stop it, stop it, stop it. I'll have to remember to change that setting. That's the wrong thing. That's not me. Oh. It's horrible. But also horrible is our blader is melting away much faster than I thought it would. ladies and gentlemen so I've been back from the moon with a Kerbal before and I don't remember it taking that much ablator out I don't know about you uh, but yeah that was somewhat of a surprise uh, Valentina Kerman is miss listed as missing in action so possibly we'll get her back but yeah I mean Maybe far, maybe deadly reentry. I don't know what was causing that, but a hundred blader. I mean, it might be a little bit slapdash, but at least in stock, and I've played stock in 1.1.2, um, isn't too far off from what you need for return from the moon. So something has changed that dramatically, and in a way I did not expect. Well, that's the situation for you. So, mission not successful. I mean, well, we landed on the moon. We did all the things. I don't... Well, I'm, I'm going to have to do some testing in order to figure out how to bring things back safely. But maybe we should just go ahead and build a, a settlement there. That'll save us from having to come back. So, uh, a great disappointment this time in the colonization series. And I hope we'll be able to do better in the future. Uh, again, it says missing in action, so I don't think I have a permadeath on for the Kerbals, which in this case is probably for the best. Um, obviously my mistake, but, but it is a complicated situation. We probably should have done testing in the first place. Alright, well, on that note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.